You're watching Inside the Right. So Tim, with Donald Trump violating his gag order so freely, this is in the Manhattan criminal trial, it kind of struck me that Trump might actually be trying to get jailed. Um, that was followed by his lawyer, Alina Haba, saying this. I don't, I, I think uh, like anybody, he's concerned about going to jail, but if they put him in jail for his First Amendment right, he will be like Nelson Mandela. I mean, uh, that would be just absurd, and frankly, they'll win uh, him the Alina, election. And of course, Trump himself took to Truth Social and wrote, if this partisan hack wants to put me in the clink for speaking open and obvious truth, I will gladly become a modern day Nelson Mandela. Tim, what is your take on this? Do you think that Trump is actually trying to get himself thrown in jail? Um, on the one hand, I'm pretty surprised he knows who Nelson Mandela is, <laughs> yeah. though most of Trump's references are from like the 80s and 90s tabloid era. So I, maybe Nelson Mandela was in the New York Post once or twice back in the right. day, I guess. Um, I, I don't think that Donald Trump wants to go to jail, um, even for a night. Uh, I don't I don't think that he'd enjoy that very much. And, and also it kind of there's a weakness, a meekness, right, to having to submit like that, um, that I think that he would be very afraid of. I do think he wants to be the victim badly, though. And um, and it's evidenced uh, by what you talked about, about his social media accounts. It's evidenced by his uh, the emails and texts. I don't know if you suffer through those, but I get the, I'm on Donald Trump's list so I can kind of see what he's saying. And, a, you know, a huge percentage of those fundraising emails and texts over the past few days have been, oh, woe is me. They're not letting me see the graduation. They're going to put, you know, Nelson Mandela, all this sort of, you know, victim stuff. They're treating me poorly. And so I do think that he wants to push the envelope as much as possible to kind of get wrapped on the knuckles so he can get the victimology out of it without necessarily having to, you know, actually suffer consequences. That's the sweet spot for Donald Trump, breaking the rules as much as possible without actually suffering consequences. So I think that's what he's trying to do this time as well. Just a sidebar on this, like, I guess Donald Trump and his MAGA wing of the party, they kind of um, see their identity as being the alphas. So how do they reconcile being alphas with also trafficking in such blatant, perpetual victimhood and, and like this whole woe is me aggrieved thing? Yeah, um, it is. T it is. <laughs> So phony, isn't it? I mean, like these are the weakest well, not, not people. Only is it, not only is it is it phony. I mean, of course it's phony, but like it just seems to be so off brand that if you're like if you're the tough guy. I mean, Donald Trump's whole thing is that he views himself as a strong man. Yeah. Uh, but then to to walk around and just constantly bitch and moan on a daily basis seems so antithetical to his own branding. Yeah. Not to be uh, use outdated pop culture references myself after uh, criticizing Donald Trump for it, <laughs> but like I think these guys see being tough as like being the tough guy in the schoolyard like nelson and the simpsons or cartman yeah. I, I really think that's how they are envisioning it now we all know that those characters like these schoolyard bullies are actually very weak and scared on the inside yeah. and and don't actually want fights but i, I think it's a, that's the kind of persona that they are putting on right where and um and I, you know i think that a lot of the people that they're appealing to are these uh you know men who have anxieties who feel um like that the culture doesn't appreciate them and so i think that they're preying on on those guys as well and that's kind of who it's landing with and you see this across culture i mean andrew tate all these fucking guys right just like just like really insecure guys who have to like yeah. like overtly uh try to prove their manhood these are, this is like the political equivalent of like these guys who throw weights down in the gym while screaming as loud as they can yeah exactly um, you know, th this whole victimhood shtick where he's trying to um, possibly get himself locked up so that he could appeal to his base clearly works with those people, you know, in his base. But is this not a major miscalculation given that we are now in general election mode? Like, does he really think that independent voters or those suburban moms out there are going to want to vote for a guy who's literally either trying to get himself placed in a jail cell or physically sitting himself in a jail cell? Yeah, two things are happening here, I think. One is I don't think he's thinking a ton about the swing voters. I, I think that he's thinking about money. How uh, going back to those texts and emails? How can I use this to help bridge this gap I have with with Joe Biden? It's worked for him over the years. That's how he's raised money by doing the victim shtick. The deep state's out to get me. These people are out to get me. So I think that that that's part of it. I also think that they have bought their own BS on this whole like 
young black men and young Hispanic men who also feel like they've been mistreated by the police are going to resonate with this. And it's just, I, there's not a ton of evidence of that that's happening. Donald Trump has done marginally better among working class Hispanics. Uh, I think that uh, men in particular, I think that's probably more due to inflation and other issues than it is due, like the, the fact that they look at him and they're like, I resonate with that because a cop was once mean to me too. I, you know, I just, I think that that's a lot of BS, but I, I do think the Trump team has kind of bought it and they think that they can kind of hit uh, hit a nerve with working class vo like voters that had traditionally been Democrats and win them over with this performance. I, I don't buy it, but I think that that's one of their calculations. It's that group, not the suburban moms they're trying to get to. Well, is it possible that that, you know, in kind of casting this off, that there is some sense of naivety among the left? Like, is there a way that this could redound to Trump's benefit by actually making it look like the evil communist Marxist Democrats are jailing Joe Biden's top political opponent? I don't I don't really think so. I think it's pretty tough to see that there's any benefit of having to sit in a courtroom all day and like fall asleep <laughs> and get made fun yeah. of on a campaign. Yeah. I, I guess I will say my only caveat to that is, you know, he did after the court yesterday, he did go to Harlem and there's kind of a man on the street thing and he's a celebrity, right? So there's kind of an excitement to see him among certain people, right? I mean, I wouldn't be very excited to see him, but there's certain people that are like, oh, Donald Trump, he's run. And, and so, you know, maybe he can gin up some everyman appeal with that crowd, but I, I, it's the, A, for starters, it's the least frequent, you know, it's the least likely group to vote. So, you know, he's trying to churn up low info people who are super into celebrities who don't like politics who are like kind of democratic, but don't really care about policy. Like, okay, if that's the group you're going to try to get at, I, you know, that's, that's not the most reliable voter. Maybe I, I wouldn't say there's a 0% chance the gambit could work, but you know, I think it's a stretch. So what's the what's the strategy here just to like go to court all day and then stroll into Harlem and hope that the 27 people that you come across will somehow find their way into a into a voting booth like yeah. eight or months maybe the now? videos. I, mean, I, I Again, I don't I don't actually think that the strategy is going to work. I'm just trying to explain to you what I think their strategy is. Yeah, I yeah. think that they would say that, OK, here's Donald Trump now go and there's some black people cheering for him and that video is going to get on TikTok and like other black folks are going to see it on TikTok and be like, oh, wait, hey, maybe Donald Trump's not racist after all. Maybe he does like black people. I, I can't. I think it's yeah. kind of a preposterous strategy, but I, that, you know, this is inside the right. You're asking me what I think that they're thinking. And that's what I think that <laughs> yeah. they're thinking. Fair enough. And and to that point, uh, for folks watching right now, if you want to get a, a better better perspective into what's happening on the right, but you know, from the perspective of this pro democracy faction of Republicans, please subscribe to the Bulwark. It's Tim's YouTube channel. He's on it throughout the week. I'll put the link right here on the screen and also in the post description of this video. If you're not yet subscribed, they make excellent content over there, and it's also important to elevate these voices of reasonable Republicans um, who aren't willing and to former kowtow. Republicans, reasonable and former Republicans <laughs> who aren't willing to kowtow to the Donald Trumps of the world. Tim, when a bunch of Republicans were polled during the primary, they said that they wouldn't be willing to vote for a convicted felon. I think there was like somewhere between like 10 and 10 and 30 percent of these Republicans, yeah. depending on the state. Um, how solid do you think that is, that sentiment is versus how many will ultimately come home to Trump in the end? Because now he is on trial. He does face the imminent prospect of becoming a convicted felon. There's certainly some percentage of people that said they wouldn't go for a convicted felon that will backtrack, right? Uh, some of them are, it's kind of like, it's a safe thing to say. There's a social desirability element to this. I wouldn't vote for a convicted felon, right? Um, but a lot of these people, if you would have asked them, would you vote for somebody who uh, instigated a riot on the United States Capitol? Uh, they would have said, no, I won't do that. And then eventually they would. I, that, I don't mean to diminish that group, though. I, like, I think that there's a group there that is gettable. I think that the way Donald Trump conducts himself and comports himself over the next six months can have an impact on a certain group of people. I don't, I don't think it's 30 percent, but it's not nothing. I mean, it, it's it's probably more like closer to that 10 percent number. Uh, and so I think a conviction would carry weight with them for sure. Yeah, I mean, it can't hurt. And also, I would note that um, these elections are won on the margins. I mean, this is yeah. a game of inches, not miles. And so if you have just a few, be I mean, if you look at Georgia, Biden won by 12,000 votes. If you look right. at Wisconsin, it was 20,000 votes. So if you have even a percentage or a 2% of Republicans who've come out and said, look, that was my line. I'm not going to cast my ballot for a convicted felon. That can ultimately have you know a huge impact on this election at the end of the day. 
For sure. And then I also think it goes back to the other part of our conversation. It makes him weak. You know, it just, it just, it diminishes him, you know, and, and there, and eventually there are these little bricks that, you know, get put in the wall where like, uh, you know, as you start to build the argument against Trump and, um, and there's a certain amount of people that want somebody that is like taking it to the deep state. And if you're getting convicted of a felony for lying about cheating on your wife, you know what, you know, like that, it, it, it takes, a, it takes some air out of the balloon for some of the people. Yeah. We have to finish off with this. Uh, and and uh, I know this was the biggest story, you know, of the last few days, but got to ask here your thoughts on Donald Trump falling asleep in the courtroom after predicating his <laughs> entire reelection campaign on calling his opponent Sleepy Joe. Well, and you might remember that I was the communications director for Jeb Bush, who we called Low Energy Jeb. So there is yep. a little bit of irony there uh, for Low Energy Don. So, so take uh, take your victory lap. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy is fine. I mean, he looks like shit. But let's just be like, let's just I obviously don't like Donald Trump, but he doesn't look good walking in and out of these. Yeah, he looks peaked, and I'm not surprised he's falling asleep. That image that Maggie Haberman painted, you know, from the courtroom of him like slack jaw and falling asleep, like we've all seen that person so i uh, you know, i don't it's not a powerful image it's not a strong in image it's not a high energy one and again i, I just think the whole context of this sometimes we can overthink this you know you have in, in you know you have all this analysis of like could it redound to trump's benefit that he's in court and then like uh, because the d i could it help him like you see people on cable news like oh well you know it's gonna fire up his base it's kind of like no actually an old man falling asleep in court while he's on trial <laughs> Like is not actually a net plus. Uh, it's just not a net plus. It's going to hurt him a little bit. Um, and uh, so it'll be interesting. We've seen some positive movement for Biden over the past few weeks, and it'll be interesting to keep monitoring that. Yeah, I think uh, in this case, it is that the most simple explanation is probably the correct explanation. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Donald Trump sitting in a courtroom falling asleep because he's on trial for 34 criminal charges is probably not going to redound to his benefit at the end of the day. Probably not. Um, with that said, again, for those watching right now, if you want to support the invaluable work that Tim and his team do, again, reaching out to these these very gettable Republican voters, independent voters, please support the work they do at The Bulwark. I'll put the link right here on the screen for you to subscribe to their YouTube channel and also in the post description of this video. I'm Brian Tyler Cohen. I'm Tim Miller. This is Inside the Right.